Hey, 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 it's Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. Happy Monday. <clears throat> How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? We had a good rainy weekend and today it turned out to be an absolutely bright, sunny, beautiful day in Connecticut. So what I want to show everybody is how I'm going to create some texture on this little cutting board. It's just a little knockoff pine cutting board. And um, I painted it in, I think it's called Riviera Milk Paint. And this is by um, Amy Howard at home. It's, it's the um, Toscana Milk Paint. Really pretty texture, really beautiful color. But I want to kind of tone this down a little bit and add some more texture, like a lot of texture. So what I'm using this time around is Miss Mustard Seed, and I'm using Ironstone, which is a pretty creamy white. And I'm also using, um, this is a mixture of Mora, and Trophy. I put about three quarters of Mora and a quarter of Trophy. Hey Shannon, how's it going? How's it out there in the um, Northwest? It's really pretty here today, but man, we got rain. It was like torrential. Um, but Shannon, I'm going to show you, you show you how to create a little bit of texture or hopefully a little more than a little bit of texture with milk paint. So I'm using natural bristle brushes. I just grabbed some of my, um, as you can see, old <laughs> Amy Howard at home one inch brushes. Um, these are natural bristle. When I wanna create texture, I go with natural bristle. And I love these brushes. They are not just a chip brush. They are pretty indestructible. I've had these for years. And I just wash them with scrubby soap. It works really well. Hey Cheryl, how are you? How's it down there in Virginia? Is it like nice all the way down? I bet you guys got slammed with a lot of rain. Ah, Shannon's saying it was hot this weekend and now is back to normal and overcast. Yep, better for the skin, right? Um, nice. All right. So this is a little technique I've done before. If you go back, um, on my Surface Anthology YouTube channel, you'll see me use this. And what I'm gonna do is, and this is pretty, this is pretty thick for milk paint. It's thickening up as we talked. I mix it up about five minutes before I went live. It's got a lot of foam, this color. Now, you can buy a defoamer, or what I do is I get a piece of cheesecloth, I put it over a bowl with an elastic band around it, and I just pour the milk paint through. Hey, Julie, good afternoon. I know it's late, it's three o'clock. It was so sunny today, you guys. I couldn't go live this morning. It was like just so bright. So I did all my running around. I went to my space in Deep River and brought some stuff down there. For anybody that's local, it's at 156 Main Street. And I have a little space, a bigger space now, inside of G's Treasures. So I was down there bringing some stuff in. All right. And there's my, um, my blend. So the first one I want to use is the white. So the Iron Stone. <clears throat> oh, my God, my phone. Are you guys getting, like, more spam? Because it is... It's gotten outrageous. Like all day long, I'm getting spam calls. Oh, it's chilly and gloomy down there. And it poured Friday and Sunday, right? Wow, it is just bright and sunny here. I hope you get, get this soon, Cheryl. It's really nice. So I'm going to take my natural bristle brush. I don't wet it first. And you guys always see me wetting the brush. And I'm just dipping it into my iron stone. And I'm just going to pounce this on. And let's see if you can see it. See that texture? That's what I want. And these brushes are so good for this.
and you can make your texture irregular, you can make it super regular, um, you know, and that's something to think about before you start pouncing. And you see me giving that a little swirl, right, before, because all the pigments and lime and chalk and all the stuff that's in um, the milk paint tends to settle to the bottom. All right, looks good. So there it is. <laughs> I am gonna do the sides really fast because I realize the real the reason I'm changing the color, a little confession. I have got from all the lives and everything so many pieces now, and I've got them hanging. We brought a bunch of stuff downstairs to the main floor. My husband and I are like, okay, what are we gonna use in our decor? And you know, what do the kids want? And what do we just, you know, gotta get rid of? So now I have a space so I can sell it. And this Riviera color, which is really beautiful, it's gonna be a slower seller. I know, uh, Cheryl, you have a space, it's like, some colors sell really well in space, you know, in certain areas, and some do not. If I still had my shop down on Old Saybrook, which is right on the sound, you know, everything is beachy. But being up in Deep River, I just, I'm, I don't want to take that chance, you know. Uh-oh, Cheryl switched over to, to YouTube. That's the good thing, right? She's saying that Facebook was acting up. It is acting up. I'm getting, Facebook is making me crazy. Um, the good thing is, if you're ever on here and your Facebook or whatever is just not working, you can do what Cheryl did and just switch over to my um, YouTube channel. But Cheryl, Julie, uh, Shannon, what colors in your area do you see a lot of? Right, it's like, what, what do people tend to buy? Okay, so there it is, kind of all lumpy. And I love I, I love this. I'm not a huge texture, like over-the-top texture person. Um, this technique is pretty cool. I'm going to use coastal colors, right? Yep, and, and that's in Virginia. Um, if, again, if I was in Old Saybrook, it would be the same thing. All right, let me get this dry. Ditto, Shannon. <laughs> now, when you use heat on the milk paint like this, you get some nice cracking. Now my phone is, oh my gosh. Oh. Hey, Wendy, hi there. Wendy, I'm asking everybody what colors sell in your area. And Shannon's saying farmhouse colors and lighter colors unless it's mid-century. And then I bet brighter, right, Shannon? As you guys know, I won't use a heat gun because I, we'll end up in flames. But I really want to get this dry. So this is a super easy way to get texture. But you see the cracking, right? The bumps, the cracking, all of that. 
all you have to do is do what I did. And you could even, if you wanted to, do it, you know, there was the Riviera on the bottom, that color, and if you didn't see it, just watch the replay. You could have mixed that Riviera up with a little white, lightened it up, done this over it, um, let it, you know, use the blow dryer to get the cracking and texture, and then just glaze it with something and call it a day. Wendy, Wendy's saying white. <laughs> Reminds us of the lingering winters that we adore. Wendy, are you being sarcastic? <laughs> Is that called mud season? I've heard it called mud season. I know up in Vermont, I think that's what they call it. And Shannon's saying a lot of neutrals out here in earth tones. There you go. That go with the greenery, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I think of because Shannon, you're in Washington, right? Please tell me I'm right. Watch, this is going to be another spam call. Oh, my God. Oh, it makes me crazy. Um, but that is what I picture in, like, arts and crafts, bungalow-style houses and that kind of thing. Um, and, oh, these calls. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> Wait, Wendy, are you in Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Um, Michigan? I can't remember. Yes. I got it right with Shannon. Washington. Cheryl, I know, is in Virginia. Julie, I can't remember where Julie is. <laughs> have to watch Fargo again. I watch it like once a year. I love that movie. All right, this feels good. Now, what I'm going to do on top of this though, because I want to create, you know, some different colors. I already have some different colors, is just put a coat of Mora. And this is a little too thick. It's thickening up as I'm talking. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. Rochester, yes! Minnesota! Wendy! Oh my God, was I wrong? Oh, I met a woman, Julie, in the post office parking lot the other day. And she's from... Oh, wait a minute. What starts with a B in upstate New York? Um, where there's a whole... And she's talking about... Oh, Buffalo. Buffalo. I'm thinking Bills. She was talking about being a huge Buffalo Bills fan. And she's showing me her car, her truck and it's got all these things. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And I'm like, I hate football. <laughs> this poor woman. <laughs> oh, Cheryl, I'm, I'm like, it's sticking in my head. All right. So you see me thin that out, right? Now it's much better. I'm going to take my second brush and now I'm just going to brush this on. And this is still even a little bit too. I want to add a little bit more water. And I'm just brushing it on. Now when you're layering um, different colors of milk paint, and what's happening, right, you just, you just missed it, but I'm reactivating the, um, the iron stone underneath. So you have to be, you know, careful, kind of gingerly put it on. But since we're making texture here, I'm not really super worried about it. Hey, Brenda! Brenda, I read your message about pom-poms, which I, I love that name. I don't know a pom-poms. Is that the best name? Brenda discovered this place, I think it's down in New Haven, called pom-poms. I just love that. All right, I'm just going to go quickly around the edges here. And yep, when I'm doing furniture... And I've done pieces like this. Right, so it's got three layers, Cheryl. Exactly. This is exactly how I put milk paint on furniture. 
Um, I I use milk paint a lot. The more you use it, you'll just you'll just now, just like you are with other paints, and get really really um, familiar with it, how it acts. The brands are different from each other for sure. That general finishes milk paint in a can is not milk paint. So don't let anybody tell you it is because it's not. Milk paint is always a powder. All right, there we go. And it's, you can see it kind of resisting in some areas. I'm just going to leave it. And now I have to dry this. Hey, 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 right, Brenda, they're all on Etsy. <laughs> you got to go to Etsy. I'm not Etsy. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Everybody's on YouTube. Oh, and Brenda's saying Pom Poms is on Etsy. <sighs> That's the dyslex dyslexia, I swear. It's the end of the day and I need a coffee. And Shannon's saying, this is my kind of lay, my kind of project. I love the layers. Yes, I love it too, Shannon. I love working with milk paint for this. So Pom Poms is on Etsy. Okay. You know I was skimming because I've been running around today like a maniac. It is easy, Cheryl. This is really easy. So now I'm drying it again. So when you use a blow dryer, what's happening is you're drying the top surface of the wet paint before, you know, it's underneath, and you get that cracking, that kind of um, cool texture. Oh, Shannon, thank you so much for sprinkling. Cheryl wants to know, why do I overcomplicate milk paint? A lot of people do, Cheryl. And um, the, you, get, you just have to use it and look at, the, look at the texture. Look at all the cracking. It's great. I just love it. So when you, this is an easy way to make a lot of texture without buying you know, all the texturizers, right? Very, very easy. So don't overcomplicate it, Cheryl. Have a couple of colors that you love, like a, a white and some other color, and start playing around with them. Do um, like small, you know, you always see me do, do those small wooden boxes and stuff. Um, they're perfect for milk paint. And you can do the most beautiful beachy look too, Cheryl, for sure. Again, Shannon, thanks for sprinkling. And look, I starred, I starred Julie's. Yes, there are a lot of Bills fans, she's saying, in upstate New York. My husband is from Philadelphia, an Eagles fan. I am just not a fan of football at all. Isn't that, I'm just not a sports person. But this lady loves the Bills so much. She had Bills stuff everywhere. She had a Bills cap on. It was incredible. So Brenda's saying, so you really have to give the color choices and orders some thought. Yes, absolutely. And I think the one that I did, Brenda, on YouTube, um, I think I used a black and maybe flow blue. So it was more kind of new, not New Englandy, but that kind of what people think of as colonial colors. Um, so yeah. Shannon is it it's saying to Cheryl, it's so much fun to play with. Gotta like the chippy look though in case it chips. Exactly, Shannon. Because that's the thing about milk paint, everybody. And and like Shannon is saying, milk paint is not a sure bet. It's not going to, unless you're working on raw wood and you saw, you know, again at the beginning of the um video. When you're working on raw wood, the milk paint is just absorbed into the wood and, you, and it's, 
you know, that's, that's how it is. It's not going to chip or anything. It acts almost like a stain. It gets absorbed into the wood, which is really, really nice. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Cheryl. So this is going to take a while to dry. Now, something I just did, I think, I think we're getting a delivery right now. My dogs are going crazy. Um, I touched and you can kind of lift some of the paint like this. This is something I discovered by accident. Um, I was watching, you know, um, an Amy Howard video on um, cracked patina. And I saw people, you know, putting their hands down. I'm not really, you know, you would want to do it before it dries. Like this is getting pretty dry. But you can lift some of the paint up. There we go. Down here it didn't get so dry. Like this. And get some really cool texture too. Um, let me show you. So it looks, it's genuinely lifting and cracking, right? And right there. Um, but that's not really what my intention is. So the next, the next time we meet, this is going to be really dry. It has to be bone dry because I'm going to do some sanding. And when you sand, you don't want to get glumps and clods of wet paint. It's just going to ruin it. Um, but this is a really, really easy technique. Get, you know, I'm trying to think for Cheryl. Where people run into trouble, and I know Shannon, you have seen, you use a lot of milk paint, is when you're working on something that has, a, it's already finished, and you don't know how the milk paint's going to react. You just don't. And I used to, when I was doing um, work for my shop where I would sell it, I would, I had a system. I would bring a piece in. Most of the time it was that 1950s or 60s kind of French provincial um, furniture. You know, we would get Thomasville and Henredon and stuff. But it wouldn't sell. So I would buy it and take the hardware off and I would clean it and then I would shellac it. I would always use Zinsser Bullseye Shellac and Clear. I would put a coat of clear shellac on it, let it cure, you know, at least 24 hours. That means dry. And then I would put on uh, milk paint and I would get these cool textures. So, and it's, it's an easy way to get a distressed, really interesting look without doing all that work. This just complicated it for me big time, Brenda, saying, oh, no, don't let it get complicated, Brenda. Oh, this is the first time I've seen the floaty hearts, etc. on YouTube. Cool. I didn't know you could do that. Shannon's saying to Brenda, you don't really have to really unless you want certain colors. I, I just go for it most of the time. I'm with you, Cheryl. Me too, Shannon. Everybody's, this is a great group for anybody that's watching and doesn't know, you know, what is going on? Everybody knows each other, right? And so they're all chatting with each other about this stuff. But I love, um, you know, these kind of, I don't know, grayed out colors. Um, and I wanted to do a dark over a light because so many times we do light over dark, right? So what I'm going to do is let this get super dry. I think at this point, I've got some nice texture on it. I'm going to get it, let it get really, really dry. And maybe tomorrow I'll come back in the afternoon and I'll do the sanding technique I want. I want to use this as a base for something I have an idea about. We'll see how it looks and then I'll share with my you you uh with my I'll share with you my idea of what I was thinking. But I really wanted to create a pretty kind of European how about this European farmhouse finish and um first and see how it goes. Julie saying she's never used milk paint. <gasps> I have some, but I haven't tried it yet. Julie. All right, you guys. And and Brenda too. Because Brenda, you're getting you're getting 
the, the complicated part for you, Brenda, that you're sharing is the colors. Is that what you're saying? Let me know. Um, go to Joanne's or Hobby Lobby or I don't know, any of those craft places and get something that's raw wood just to cut out like this. But get it, you know, this is pine, um, very absorbent wood. Get something that's just raw wood to start with. So you don't have, it is, Brenda's saying yes, it's the color. Get something that you don't have to have the issue of um, the, the pre-existing finish. Because that can really send you, you know, it can make your head blow off if, if it's like, Oh my God, Jane, all the milk paint chipped off or it's all bleeding. Just get a plain, maybe just a plain pine board. I like pine for something like this. It's, it's, it's absorbent. It's a soft wood. It's easy to work with. Um, just don't get any pine with big knots in it because that'll bleed for sure. Okay. Brenda's saying color and the order of the colors. So this is completely random. Well, it wasn't completely random, Brenda. I knew that I wanted to pick kind of a, um, a su more subtle look than the, the, the Riviera color, which was very bright. And I thought I'm going to put a darker color over a lighter color for this project. So I mixed up the um this is ironstone it really is a creamy creamy white and then i added a little bit of mora with trophy so i grayed out the mora and that's and that's what i wanted to do i made that decision and sometimes you just have to do that you just have to say okay this is what i'm going to do and and don't mix up a ton of paint mix up a little bit of paint and get yourself a little scrap of wood and try it out and see how it works. Good, Julie's saying, okay, I will. Ha I have some and we'll try, thank you, yes. Because if you don't try, and, and your first time out of the gate, it might be absolutely stunning and yay, right? But you might have challenges, right? Or something, like you planned for it to go this way and it took, you know, a, a turn the other way. And that tends to happen with milk paint, it really does. See, that's it, Brenda's saying, knowing you want darker over lighter. Yep, I just made that decision because I was thinking, you know, so often we see a, a light color over a dark color for some reason, right? And I just wanted to do a darker color over a lighter. So that's all that I did. Um, and you can do it the other way around too. Or you can do, I know I did a... Um, a video, Brenda, on my YouTube channel where I used tricycle red. I mean, it's a really bright red. And I put um, Artissimo, this beautiful blue over it. So you, you do have to make a decision now. And don't stay safe if you're working with small little like scraps of wood and stuff. Because if you stay safe for too long, you're never going to... Um, I don't know, kind of open up your repertoire of finishes, right? You'll you'll always be staying safe, which is okay. But if you really want to develop your style, which Brenda, you definitely have, Julie, Cheryl, you all do. So if you want to keep growing that style, your own personal look, right? Where people say, oh, that's a Brenda. I know that's Brenda. Absolutely. You got to push the, the envelope, push yourself. And, and you'll say, wow, I really loved those really bright colors together. I'm going to do a larger piece now with that. So yeah, do it, do it. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave you now. You do, absolutely, Brenda. When, when you guys are in our uh, membership, you know, in our Facebook group, and you just, if you're scrolling through, I can tell who is who. You know, it's like, oh, that's Danielle. I see Brenda, right? I could, I can just tell. And Shannon, absolutely. It's like, 
And I bet you all, when you're watching your favorite creators on Facebook, you could be, oh, that's Tammy, that's Joni, this is Sassy, you know, I call her Sassy. Um, you know, I know those people. I, I know their look, right? Um, it's like it's like anything, art, furniture design. I don't know, I bet there are plastic surgeons that have a look to their uh, facelifts, you know? Absolutely, Cheryl. Yes, you are so welcome. And I see that. I find that very, very interesting. I've always taught. I used to teach life drawing. That means we had nude models, right? We were drawing them. And I had students who always wanted to stay safe. You know, I was one of them. I, I was cocky when I first started school because I knew a lot about anatomy and I could draw it. I could draw anatomy, but I couldn't. I was able to, you know, when I realized I had a wonderful mentor, Jim McMullen, a very wonderful artist, who said, Jane, you're drawing a beautiful leg, but it's not the model's leg. You're not looking at what makes the model who she is. So you're just, you know, you're just drawing a leg. And that's how you become a hack. And I, I, I know people, you know, hear that word, but it's true. So you're all laughing. <laughs> Listen about the facelift, right? But it's true. It's true. I will bet you plastic surgeons all get together in a room and go, oh, that's Dr. Smith's facelift. I can tell, you know, um, I'm telling you, everybody, what's unique about us is us. And that's about it because everything's been done. It, re it really has. But what makes it special and unique is you. And when you guys are trying something that's scary, like milk paint, you got to push yourself. So don't overthink it, Brenda. You just pick out two colors, make sure they have some contrast, and then just paint. All right? I know. Isn't that funny? Well, I did hair, for, hair and makeup for so many years, you guys. And I, you know, I could tell if somebody's had Botox, their eyes done, all of that, right? Because I had so many clients who would tell me what was going on, what they had done. I would see them before and after. You know, Jane, can you can you cover up? You know, we can't let it get too short because I have scars. So, um, yeah, I'm telling you, you pulled that out of the hat, <laughs> Brenda. <sighs> but to me, creativity is I could. You know, we can apply it to like so many things, right? Including plastic surgery. All right, ladies, go grab your milk paint and don't make a big deal out of it. I brought up a glass of water. I got my two little bowls. I mixed it up and I grabbed this little fake cutting board and I just did it. Now I'm going to go take this stuff, put it in the sink and... I'll be back here for the next step, all right? So you guys can do that too. So get your milk paint out. All right, ladies, I'll hopefully be on tomorrow or Wednesday. I do have a call with um a bunch of wonderful ladies in the morning. My um my buddy Tammy and Joni and Kim. So um sometimes we go a little long <laughs> when we're talking about um we talk about business and we talk about all that stuff, all that good stuff. So, all right, I will see you all soon. Grab some creative time. Get your milk paint done. Happy painting, you guys. Thanks for joining me.